Hi everybody and welcome to Ages Cozy Crochet Corner. So today we're going to be doing a remake. So I made this lovely piece right here and I want to remake it. And in the remaking of it, my daughter, she wants one. So I'm going to remake it for her for her birthday. So this piece right here is going to take 72 blocks to recreate. You see, we have the large granny square in the middle. We'll also be redoing that on this piece. It's going to look exactly the same with different colors. So again, 72 blocks is going to take the work up this piece. And they are granny squares worked in five rounds. So we're going to get out this corner. We got two days to her birthday. So let's see if we can get it done. So, my happy crochet people. So, I am working on this tutorial for you, but I just want to make mention, if you hear the sizzling going on in the background, it's because I'm frying up some chicken. It's Sunday, you know, you got to get that Sunday dinner ready for the folks. They're waiting for it. They're looking for it. And I got to get this video done because I've worked up so many different things for you guys. So, I don't want to stop progress. So, we're just going to have our sizzle in the background, a little... uh how the kids say it, the ASMR or whatever that is, you know, them satisfying sounds where you're watching videos of people chewing stuff. Well, we got crochet and sizzle. So we're gonna make us some fried chicken and we gonna um we gonna work up uh some 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 lovely, 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 lovely uh blocks. Granny squares. You know what I'm saying. All right, people, so let's get back into it. Okay, everybody, so today to make this granny square sweater, I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter. And I always lay my pieces out like this so that I do not have colors that are the same back to back. So I just wanted to show you this before we get started. So maybe you would like to do that too. Because when you have multiple colors like this and you have them back to back, of the same color it kind of throws off what you're the look that you're trying to achieve so I always lay my pieces out and we have the front the arms and everything all laid out but let's start working this thing up piece by piece okay everyone so I have posted a video on how to join so I will not spend as much time as my last video on joining but I will show you how to work up one entire side and then you will be required to just go back so you'll be able to just look at this again or refer to my video on joining. So let's see. This is the front panel. So today we'll be making a long coat so I have nine pieces in the panel. This is one side of the front and this is the other side of the front. So what you're going to have to do is to join each one so that they connect and you have one continuous piece. So what you're going to want to do, take your yarn and wrap it around your finger. We're going to take two pieces and you just want to lay them with the wrong side facing you. With the wrong side facing you, both sides. And you're gonna put your hook through both of the corners. Attach your yarn to your hook, pull through. Grab your yarn, pull through that hole, make it tight now. And then I like to go back through the hole and make a single. Cause I wanna make sure that's locked on there. Now from there, we're just gonna be matching up at the top of our doubles, we're gonna be matching. Well, actually, I did my outside and making a single crochet. So it's gonna be one, one, two, two, three, three. But um, I took and I decided to make half doubles on the outside of mine. So you just want to find each hole and match it up. I found that when I did doubles, I was getting a larger size than I wanted. So I've worked up all of these pieces in doubles 
but then I went back and decided to be half doubles just in the tan round. So I'm going to go in the top of each one matching them. Whatever I'm doing in the front, I'm also doing in the back. So we have clusters of three, so you want to go in the top one, one, two, three. All the way down the line so you get to the end. All the way down the line so you get to the end. So that's one on this side, so it's one on that side. So I'm going to go in the second one here, and I'm also going to go in the second one in the back. And I'm just joining them with a simple single crochet. So I'm going to the back here, front here, and the back here. And I'm joining them with a simple single crochet. And we all going to do that only on the top portion. All the way through to the last one. Until you get to the last corner. And when we get to our last corner, we're going to go inside both of the corners, and that is it. And we'll end off here. And we have our first join. So now what we've done here, we'll pick up another block. We'll put the back side facing us. So we're working on the wrong side. We'll put our hook through the hole, through the corner here, and the corner on the back. And we will join our yarn onto to this piece right here. Let's the mirror. And we're going to make a single make sure it's tight and we're going to find the first one here and we're going to find the first one here and we're going through the tops of both of our doubles to the top both tops with two pieces two loops there you want to go through make sure you go through both of them and we're going to match them up all the way down the line. Front here, front here. And this is the second one here. And we'll go to the second one here. And the third one, and the third one. It's very repetitious. And we'll work this way all the way to our end. Well, I will, our end being our corner. And again, we have nine pieces for the front panel and this long post. So we want to make sure we do nine pieces. Attaching them in the same manner. And all of our pieces we will attach in the same manner. Finding whatever you're doing in the front, you're also doing in the back. All of your pieces should be the same, so they all should match up perfectly. If you, have just, if you miss something, by the time you get to the end, you have one more stitch, extra stitch, just pull it out and start over again. And just be mindful that you're working there. Are three clusters. You're working. There are three clusters. So it's three here, three here. So you should be matching those up and you have three stitches. Now, once you go in the hole, in the corner hole, you're done. I chain up one, cut my yarn, and I'm going to pull that through. And just like that, we have three together. And we're just going to keep going out in the same way. So, I'm going to work this up off camera. And you just keep joining. You should have, when you're done, you should have nine connected. 
Now, you also have the second front. Join those together and you will have nine connected here. So you should have two panels of nine. But while you're at it, we might as well do our sides because they're exactly the same. The only difference for our sides are instead of nine, these pieces are eight. Okay, your side is always going to be one piece smaller, less than your front. So when you're finished doing your two panels of nine for your front, go ahead and in the same way in which you have, work up your two panels of eight. And I'll see you back. Okay, everybody. So what we have here is our arms. So for the arms, you're going to need two panels of four, okay? Because our arms are going to be two by four. So what I would love for you to do is once you've worked and connected four twice, we are now going to join them down the seam. So I'm going to work up this one side to show you how you join the seams, as well as I do have in my joining tutorial, it would show you how to join this as well. So if you need any further assistance, just refer back to that video and I'll make sure I put all the links for that in the description. So once we have them joined, remember back sides, wrong sides facing you. Let's attach our yarn. And it's pretty much just like how we attach one by one. You're going to add. Oops. Oh, I don't want to go through. Okay. You're going to add your yarn on. Oops. And you're going to go through the same, work it the same way. The only difference that we're going to have is going to be to where we get to where we join here. And it's quite simple. Show you how to do that. So, yes, work all the way down one by one, two with two, three with three. And I'll show you how to the difference there. And then we'll be good. And you'll know how to do that as well. Yes, I just could not miss the opportunity to work up this piece with you guys and show you how the long one is put together. I've done quite a bit of green square to uh, sweaters that I've shown you. But the long one is probably my absolute favorite, and I could not let you miss out on this one. My daughter picked out all of the colors. So this is Colors Inspired by Brie. And I really can't wait to see how it's going to turn out. I think these colors are so fallish. And, um gonna work out well all right so we're coming to the end right before my corner I have one more so when we get to the corner of our first block sorry I have yarn in the way so when we get to the corner of our first block and we work we've come this far in the same manner in which we have been before joining so you see we come to a corner so I want you to go inside this corner and inside the back corner together and pull up and make a single. So this is the join, AKA I like to call it the forbidden zone. It's forbidden because we're not gonna work in there. So we're gonna come all the way, skip past that and go to the next corner and we're gonna work inside of that corner. So just like that and work right inside of that corner. And it's gonna be that way all the way through. When you get to the corner, you're going to work inside this corner with this corner, and then you're going to jump right back over to the next corner. Leave the forbidden zone, a.k.a. the joining area, alone. You're not going to be working in that. So we're going to continue going down, matching one by one, two by two, 
three by three, and then on to the next cluster, one by one, two by two, and so forth and so on. I had developed a little song last time for this. Um, I'm trying to get that song out my head, so I'm trying to refrain from saying the same words in which I was saying before. But um, we are going to keep going down on top of each cluster, only working in the top half, making sure we catch both loops on the top of each. until we get to our next corner. And just like that. Keep going all the way down. All the way down. And now we are at our next corner. So again, I want you to go inside the corner in the front piece, inside the corner in the back piece. Make your single. Then I want you to skip the join space and I want you to jump right into the next corner and join those together. So keep working that out all the way through to the end. So now we have added and We've added both sides together, so now we have a 2 by 4 piece. So this is what you want, a 2 by 4 piece. And once you get your 2 by 4 piece, you're going to fold that over. And we're going to go right back to the corner on the opposite side. Find the corner opposite side here. And we're going to join this piece in the same way in which we have done here all the way along the tops of here. And then that will be our arm. So once you've gone ahead and joined this piece, that's gonna make one arm, I want you to do the exact same thing on for your next piece arm. Ah, for your next arm. Let me see. Yeah, this will be your next arm. So you want to work it in the same way, joining, joining, joining here, and then joining like we're about to do here. So once you finish this, make up your other arm, and we'll see you back for the back. <clears throat> okay, everybody, so now we have our back panel pieces. Now, in our back panel, because we're going to use the large granny square at the top, we only need one, two, three, four, five, six at the bottom, okay? So, we're going to work up a three by six panel. Three by six. So, you're going to have to put together six single rows. Say one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we are going to attach these. So in the same way that we did the arms, I want you to fold this over, attach it down the seam here, then it'll open back out, and then fold this over and attach it on the seams here. And I'll be right back to show you what that's gonna look like. Okay, so once you piece them together, see, it should open up just like that, going down the sides. So now what we have to do, this is the bottom part of the back. So this is the top portion of the back. So with this, I've just taken and made a large granny square sweater with using the colors that we've used throughout our piece. And... I worked it up as large as I needed for her back. So I measured her back. Um, and so you would measure who, whomever you are using this for and make that according and make it as big as you know you need to. So with that being said, I now need to attach this to the top of here. So if you would notice, it is a little bit 
this is a little bit larger than a top piece. So how do we fix that? No worries. All we're gonna do is let's see this flip it like this and show you. I'm going to take and I'm going to match the pieces. So I'm gonna put that there. And I'm gonna put this here. And see there is a gap. But then I just want to make it flush. So the top part is going to stretch a little bit for this. You will wind up working more loops and holes on which you've reused. If there's going to be the look of a gather on the bottom half, but that is what I want. Okay. So as you see, if you stretch it, you can make this, the, 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 the top part fits to the bottom part. So that's what you're basically going to do. So, so if you have pins, show you this way to make it easier for you. I would pin that side. And then I would come and I would pin this side. And then I would pin the middle. Yeah. In the middle. And everything else would just have to fall in line. So say here, I might make my gather on my corner, my join space. So I, I would just in this area work throughout all of those in one stitch just to, to make it easy. So let's go on down the line and let's see what that would look like. So we're going in this corner here and we're going in the corner stitch here. And again, you're going to go around in the same manner which we already have done, very repetitive, nothing changes. It's just when we get there, we want to, and right now you're just going in whatever hole, match a hole here in the top of my double and the top of my double here. So we're just matching uh, tops. You're doing nothing special, just matching tops. going to do that all the way to where we kind of have a gather. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Usually I don't pin. I like to be difficult. I, I'll just hold it and keep going and but I don't want to make it seem so complicated. It's somewhere someone else thinks like ah that's hard. It's really not. You, when you get and you're almost there. When you get here You will see I'm just going to uh, make extra pieces, I mean extra uh, stitches, and the stitches that are already there. So, I'm going to go here. Alright, I'm going to use that, that same hole, and I'm going to grab it in the next hole here. And now I'm going to go here and find my next hole. So just like that, and I only had to do two stitches actually. I, I only used that one stitch or two stitches because I didn't use the join space. So I caught it here and in that corner and then I was able to keep going along. So in the same fashion, that, that's how you're going to attach this piece. And it's going to have a little gather on it, not really much, but it's kind of what you want. You want that, well, it's kind of what I want. I want that look. Um, you may have had to make a larger back piece for your piece 
so it may end up getting flush and you won't have to do this. Because if you're making a smaller piece than this, then you're probably using a different uh, needle size, which you'll get different size granny squares and everything should pretty much equal up. It shouldn't be a huge, huge gap for you. I want you to finish this on up. Just go straight down the line. And I'm back. When you get here, just fit everything in the best way you can. So just using the best way you would like to, to make everything fit together. Because once you've created that scene and once you put these pieces together, it's seamless. It's all one piece. Now, I do want you to know that you could use a darning needle or a, a yarn needle in which to just sew it with yarn. But I don't like to do that if I'm crocheting. I always like to say if I'm crocheting, I'm crocheting all the way through everything. Now, see, I went to show you this one. This a little bit better. So, I, I went in the next hole here. Now, because I'm, I'm at my point, if you can see it, I'm at my point and this space can stretch all the way here. So I'm going to go in this hole and then I'm going to find the next hole, skipping the join space, I'm going to find the next hole on the opposite side. And just like that, two stitches, I've closed up that. And I can work it from beginning, uh, from right here, all the way to the end with no problems. Alright, so finish it on out to the end. And I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to work together some pockets. Okay, now let's talk pockets. And then one, two, three. Okay, so let's talk pockets. Now for this piece, I want to make larger pockets. And I also had extra pieces, so I'm going to use them. So what we're going to do is take and we're going to join three pieces together. If you only have two for your pockets, then that's fine. Your piece will just look like that. But you have to at least have two for your pockets. Me, I'm using the extra ones that I had. So I'm going to take three and put them together. In the manner in which we have been putting them together. So in order to make the pocket, I'm just going to fold this. Okay. And I'm going to pull that down. Which gives me what? Just a larger pocket. It's longer. Longer. Um, which is what I want. So for your pockets, you're just going to crochet from this end all the way to the corner. And from this end all the way to the corner, leaving the opening space. So I will do that and I will come back and show you exactly what your finished pocket should look like. Okay, so now you should have all your pieces like this. This is our back piece, which should be six blocks and three rows and your back top. You should have two arms. Your arms should look like this. We're going to turn them on the right side now. So we'll be working on them on our right side. Uh, there we go. And we should have two of these. If I can turn it on the right side, it wants to fight them. Okay, there we go. Don't be scared to get a little rough with it. You should have made them stitches tight enough and not going anywhere. And then you should have two pieces for the side. And there should be two pieces with eight on each piece. Okay, it should be eight on each piece. And those are for the side. And you should have two panels 
with nine on them, and that would be the front panels. And last but surely not least are our pockets. Now remember, I have made a little bit larger pockets because I had two extra pieces. So here are my pockets. And we're going to turn those on the correct side as well. And if your pockets are not as long, it's probably because you have two pieces, which is fine too. Like I said, I was just working up the extra pieces that I had. No lead, no lead in leaving any piece behind. We don't believe in wasting. So, now what's next? Next, we're going to take our back piece. Back piece. And we're going to take our side pieces. So, back piece and our side pieces of eight. And I'm going to turn it this way so you can kind of see turning it upside down and we are going to lay on our these strings here because I don't want the same color in the same spot we are going to take our back pieces and we are going to put our sides on attach our sides now our back pieces should stop one short One short space for the arms okay so the, our, our, our top pieces are probably going to let me see are probably going to stop right about here okay because remember we are not using blocks for the top half we are using this giant granny square so it's not going to come all the way up to the top here and the front it will but not for the sides the size is one block short so we're probably going to get it about right here so don't think it's wrong when it doesn't turn out exactly to go to the end it's supposed to not go to the end okay so we're just going to start at the bottom and we're going to connect each block oh, hiding my scissors and my needle and get our yarn and we're just going to attach this block per block until we get here and then the last two blocks and then up here the last two blocks will just lay uh, on to the giant granny square the best way possible but you still have the clusters of three so you're still going to keep in track with the clusters of three so I'm going to work up both of my sides in the same manner in which we have connected everything else. And I will see you back here as soon as you have that finished. So we're just going to go in our corner holes, go for our corner, oh, find the hole, corner holes, attach our yarn. My yarn doesn't seem to want to be attached right now, but attach our yarn. go and start climbing up the side piece so we're attaching the sides to the back and we're going to go all the way up this side go all the way up the other side and meet you back here and we'll see what we have Okay, so this is what your piece should look like once you have completed putting on the sides. Now let's look at this up here. My sides went all the way up leaving one, two, three clusters here and one, two, three clusters there. So be mindful that you want your sides to both stop at the same place. So whatever sides you, wherever you stop here, you want to try to stop here as well or else your piece will look a little uneven. So I have three clusters here, I have three clusters here. So that is good, that is good. So now we want to attach our front. So you want to lay down your front. Mm, with 
one block. Now remember, your fronts are going to attach here. Okay. So lay down your fronts. Now the only interesting part about the fronts, and of course we're going to sew up all the way to here, and then this will be the opening for the arm. You'll get it. Don't worry. So with it's stopping one short because the side is only eight and the front is nine. Now we want to put pockets. Okay. So we have to leave a space when, so, when, when crocheting up this edge for our pockets. We want to look at the first block and go one, two, three, four, five. Because I want my pocket to begin on my fifth square. So the pocket will ooh, 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 sit flush like this. So it will be attached to this block underneath here and this block. So whoops, our fifth block here should be our fourth block underneath. And it's going to sit like that. So with that being said, we have to leave an opening. So what I want you to do is crochet, attaching as we have been from the bottom corner all the way up until one, two, three, four, so you get to your fourth block. And then you would end right there, cut your yarn. Then you would go back and start again right here at the, where this block ends and start here in this corner and go all the way up to this block. So I'm gonna do this first side and then we're not using the pockets right now, the pockets get put aside. We're just leaving the space here and here for our pockets. So wherever you would like your pocket to go on your piece, then that is where you would leave a space for. And you only need to leave one space for a pocket. Um, and when you're done, it, it, you won't be able to tell where you've left the space. Sometimes I have a hard time even seeing where the pocket is. Um, so when I show people their new sweaters, it's, it's like a surprise. It's like, wow, I have a pocket. So they're little secret little nooks. <laughs> I love it. Just go all the way up until you come to where you want to place your pocket stop in the corner of the block before and break off your yarn and then you're going to pick right back up where you would like your pocket to end so there's only one block worth so if you want your pocket to begin here then you'll end here cut off your yarn and close and then pick back up on the opposite on the uh, the next block following the block where you would place so I'm going to work up both of my sides and I'll come back and I'll show you exactly how that's supposed to look once you've placed that hole for your pockets. And we'll go ahead and put the pockets in. Okay, now once you have added your front piece and you have made space for your pocket, this is what it would look like. Just an empty space right here for you to fit your pocket in. Okay? So let us go ahead and work our pocket in. Now, when we're working in the pocket, we're on the wrong side. We're going to place it down right where it should be and turn this over. Now, to add our pocket, all we're going to do, as you see, it fits perfectly in here because it's the same. Uh, it's the same amount of space. This is one square. This is one square. So in the exact same way in which we added everything else, we're gonna add this. The only thing is when we start, pick a corner to start, we find a corner up here to start. And that is how we do the, the edges, but it's the same thing. We just wanna go right around. So I'm gonna attach my yarn. corner to corner. 
attach my yarn in the corner. So I'm going to go to let me check this out. I'm going to go to the next corner. I attached it with this corner. I'm going to go to the next corner. Go in the corner there and then find there we go. The corner here and I'm going to attach it with a single crochet. Make sure I pull tight. Now the next space, and I'm going to match it up the space of the pocket, and the next space, and the next space, and I'm just going to keep matching the clusters in the same way in which we have been doing all the way around. So we're going to go all the way around. And I like how it looks when I do it this way rather than to use the needle. But you can use the needle and put the pockets just like we did. One right next to the next one. Well, not right next to so One on top of the next one. And just weave in and out, merging them together like that. But I just, I, I like how the ridge looks. Did you see it gives it a little ridge right here when you do the single crochet. So I'm going to continue going around this and single crochets. And when I come to my corners, I'll just match up my corners. And that'll be that. This coat is coming out really really nice and I'm loving the colors and even though I tried to keep the same colors away from uh, away from each other as I'm piecing together my lines on my rows I still wind up in some places with the same color so it almost seemed impossible to do with this one because I only have seven blocks of, of color which repeat Normally, when I do multicolors like this, they're all different colors. But no, not with this one. I decided to keep a Roman theme with all of them um, the same way. So, okay, we are coming up on a corner. And I just want to show you kind of how I'm going to go around one more time. Working with pockets is like working with sleeves. So impossible. All right, so when we get back up here, we're at a corner. We find that corner. Let's find this corner. And go around. And then I'm going to find. Find the next corner. going all the way around until so I have it also down and then we're going to go move on to the sleeve. Now, I think with the sleeve, I'm going to use the crochet needle so you can see how to attach with the needle. So then the same way that we would attach this, we would attach this with the yarn needle. I'm going to do the sleeve that way. That way, if that's what you choose to do, you have a demonstration of it being done. And I cannot believe it's only one day and we're basically finished this thing. I think we're going to pull an all-nighter and get it done. That way it's ready for our birthday reveal. And I think she's absolutely going to love it. So as we come back around to the end. I'm 
by my corners. I'm just work it in the corner here and in the corner up at the top. And it is done. Now I want to go under any stitch just to close off. it. I have a pocket. It's an awesome pocket. It's a, it's a slightly deeper pocket. And that is it. Now, I lost where I am. <laughs> okay, we spent it around so much we got to the bottom. Now this is, and as you see, I, I've already attached the other arm. Now we still have a piece that looks like this. So we have to connect the shoulders. Now this is the side piece, this is the front piece, this is the back piece. You want to take the front piece and put it with the back piece. Like this. Okay, and it should match up. We have one cluster, one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna take our needle, we're gonna put it in the corner here, and we're gonna put it in that fifth one right there, and we're going to close this off. So this area will now become our shoulder area. be able to get ready for our arms. So, just go all the way down. Still attaching the same way. And I think this one works up nice. Um, this will turn out to be for a size small. I would say that extra small to a small and that was again using a five millimeter hook and granny squares that have five rounds shoot them. so that was four rounds of color and one round of our neutral color which all of our blocks have and this would work up for her. She's a size small, but it would also fit an extra small. And I think this is going to look nice. If you are doing a bigger size, it's always just move up a size. I originally made this coat in a size large, a medium to a large. And I used a five millimeter hook everything else was exactly the same way and that gave me the difference that I needed. Now now that we have this now we have a hole for our arm. So I want you to find your arm and which side will we need. Um, let's do this one. We have our arm. Our arm is on our the right side. Please make sure it's on the right side. We're gonna take and turn this. So wrong side facing up. And we're going to place our arm. right in here. Now, if you notice, we have a seam here, which we just made. I want to match one of the seams on the sleeve with that that is on the top of there. 
That way it will look seamless once you have put it all together. Okay. Now I just want to hold this up. And let's see, right there. Just want to hold it up so you, so you can see what you're doing without moving it around too much. And you can plant pins in this. Because if you notice the hole going around here is slightly larger. Sometimes I do stitches in order to close close the hole up going around. Or I'll make extra stitches to make the top part wider. But because the length of our arm is almost just right for our sweater owner, I don't want to do that. So if you notice, and it depends on you if, if how you want to do yours, but if I go like this, just give a little stretch, I'm perfect. It's perfect. That's going to work well for me. Now, we're going to pin this down. I want to take and pin this right at the top. Well, like a little bit lower than the top because I don't want it to be in my way just so I do not lose that. that and then I want to take and pin it at the bottom, which will be under the armpit. And then I'm going to pin my side. And I'll pin the other side. Just like that, we have a basic idea. It's not going to go anywhere. Let's put some yarn on our yarn needle. I like the metal ones. They do have plastic ones. I love the metal ones. Only because every time I use the plastic ones, somehow I wind up breaking them. These, they're thick, heavy. It's really no break in this. They last forever. So we want to put our yarn on, tie a knot at the end because we don't want it to get away from us. And we'll just pick a place to start. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Now when I first start, I want to go over it. The arm instead of going back and forth only because just like when we attach our yarn when we're using a crochet hook I want to make sure I have a secure attachment now we're just going to weave in and out of the tops of the doubles so that's a top that's a top and we're just going to weave this in back and forth around all the, the whole top I usually like to go around two times <clears throat> because I'm, I don't feel as secure with this way of putting on the sleeve as I do when I crochet on. When I crochet on, I know that sucker's not going anywhere. I'm satisfied with it. When I do it this way with the sew, I'm always like I don't know you never want to pull too tight because then you don't want your sleeve the, to, the sleeve <clears throat> part to be too tight I always double back one when starting see my yarn is here but I always double back one when starting just because it locks that section that I've already done in place and we're just going to go around the whole piece and this is the same way you would do the pockets if you chose to use the needle method versus the hook method and in installing your pockets. And I wanted to make sure I did one element in this way. That way, if you want to do it, you do have some kind of guideline on, on where you should be placing your needle. So again, we're just going through the tops, loops, 
of our doubles from that round just as if we were using the crochet needle a crochet hook I'm sorry we would be doing so we're matching the back to the front it's just going in and out in and out and when you come to the end you're just gonna pull that off make sure you, you have no tension it's not tight it should be loose and you're doing good so when you finish I'll see you back around and I'll show you how we are going to go around for our borders and that will end all so now that you have your arms attached it should come out looking good both of our arms attached now and that looks good I still love the crochet way better crocheting on with the hook but for demonstration purposes um, I think that is great so we have our pockets everything else the last thing we have to do is we will be going around this whole entire piece with a border and we will be going around our arms with the same border now borders this is where you put your personality and your spark into your piece <clears throat> you can do your borders in uh, multiple multiple uh ways but i am going to start with my bottom and i'm going to show you what kind of border i'm going to be putting on it's pretty much going to be the same clusters and i'm going to work up my bottom for a couple inches and then I will go around the sides all the way around all the way up here and around here continuous back and forth back and forth but I'm going to show you how to do the back and forth on the bottom and I'm just going to work up as many rows as I think I like and then I will come back and I will show you how many I did work up so let's go through one row so you can see how this border is done. So you want to attach your yarn like we have been. And you're going to crochet up three, three chains. Now right in that same hole, I want you to go in there and make two doubles because our chain of three counts as one uh, double. So now we have a cluster of three. Chain over, go into the next hole, and you're going to make another cluster of three. So you're gonna make three doubles into that hole. Now you're gonna chain over and into the very next hole, you're going to make three doubles and so forth and so on go into the next hole and you're going to do three doubles and we're going to do that all the way along this line you know when we come to a corner like we have now so we're working along our blocks so once we come to a corner like this we're going to go in the corner and make a cluster of three two three so we put our three doubles in there so we are at the end of that block now our next block comes up we do nothing with the join space we go right back into that corner and we're going to make a cluster of three And that is basically it. We're in every hole, we're going to make a cluster of three. So we're gonna go all the way to the end and then I will show you how to go back the other way. And you will just keep repeating these two rows. So 
work it all the way to the end, going through every hole, putting a cluster in. And I'll see you at the end of this. And okay, so we are coming up to the end of our piece. So we're making the cluster of three doubles all the way along the edge of the bottom. And we want to do this as many times as we feel as though we need to for the height that we're trying to achieve. So I'm just going to play it by eye and see how many rows I'm going to put in. Now I'm coming to my last corner. I want to go inside that corner and make another cluster of three. Remember every hole gets a cluster of three. Now if you're not familiar with what to do as far as turning up and around, I want to show you. So in order to go up to my next row, we're going to one, two, three, chain three. Now the thing is we're not always going to chain three. So I want you to uh, kind of watch this. So if we have ended on a cluster of three, then we're going to chain up three. And we're going to leave this space standing alone, yarn over, and go right into the next hole to make another cluster of three. And we're going to keep going all the way out like this. And this will be the same method we will use when going around the outside of our piece. We would start in the bottom corner and just go around and around and around. Back and forth, back and forth, turning our work as many times as we desire. Now with a, this piece that I'm making here, I'm going to have to do that quite a few times seeing as though it is a large space and I only put one panel in front. Now I could have placed two panels in front, which would have meant that I would not have to <laughs> do this as many times, but I like the look of it. So just remember in every hole, you're going to make a cluster of three. And you just go back and forth. So do that and I will see you again at the end of this row. So we are coming to the end here. Last three. Now when we end like this, now remember I told you when we end in a cluster, we're gonna chain up three and that's it. So if this was the end, we would just chain up three and then go right back into the hole on our next round. But we are ending like this. So what I want you to do when you end like this, chain over. I want you to put a chain of three and a, a, a double inside the end right there. Okay? So when we end like this, in the same manner, I want you to just place one one double crochet in that last double okay and chain up one now we want to go right back into the same hole because what do we do in every hole we put a cluster so we're going to go right back in that hole and and put our cluster in that hole And there you go. And it's going to keep a straight line. That is how we're going to keep a straight line. So when you end, when you end without another hole to go into, you're just going to make a double in that last end of the cluster. And when you begin, if you have a hole to start, your start is a hole, you're going to chain one and go in. 
if your start is a cluster, you're going to chain three and then go into the next following hole. So I hope that that right there makes sense. You're going to follow that out all the way. If you cannot remember that, then go back to that point right there and reference that. Okay, when you end with, when you end with your hole here, and you have nowhere else to, to put a cluster, you have to make a put a double into the top stitch of your last cluster and chain one. Then you're going to go right back in the hole. If you end on a, clu a cluster at the end, then you're going to chain three and then find the next hole. Okay, because you see they alternate. You're going to end in a cluster sometimes, but sometimes your, your cluster is going to be here. Okay, so just reference that. That is the only difference, our edges, because you want your edges to be uh, straight. Because when we go around the coat in the opposite direction, we want everything to be straight. And we're going to do work the same way. Nothing's going to change. So, let me open this out. Let's open this out right here. So, I'm going to finish going around my bottom. I do not know how long I want to make it yet. I'm really going to play it by eye. So, I'm going to work out the bottom. And once I get the desired length I want on the bottom... Then I'm going to take and start in a corner and go all the way around the whole lining of this piece. Okay, not the bottom because I've already be done the bottom. Just go around the whole top all the way to one end and then come all the way back again and back and forth and back and forth. And I don't know how much I will put on that either because I've yet to determine what I like, um, what I would like to do. So I will come back and I will show you what I chose to do and how many rows I did it in, okay? <clears throat> okay, everybody, so we have finally finished our piece I'm going to tell you how many times I went around for the bottom portion in the border. I went around three times at the bottom to the border. And then once I finish that, just like I told you, I'm going to start from the corner and work your way up in the same manner as which we did the bottom all the way to this side and go all the way back up. So if you can see this good, what I chose to do was take all the colors that I've worked in my pattern and decided to put those on the border. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I went around eight, nine, ten times. So I went around this piece ten times. And then, on which I'm so sorry I did not capture on camera, I decided to put a belt on it. Uh, you see the loops here. So how you do this is easy. You would chain seven, go into the second chain from the hook, and keep working back and forth, back and forth. These are just single crochets, nice and tight, nothing major. And I went around as many times as I felt as though I liked for the length. And for the loops holes, I went I, uh, went two chains more than the belt, and I went up, <clears throat> and I only did two, worked up two rows, so that way, it's, it's small, but it's wide enough for the belt to get in and out very, very easy. You just make two of them place it where you would like it and run your belt through. I did not put one on the back. Just uh, one on each side. And I did mine right above um, almost where the pocket is. 
and again these are just single crochets just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of single crochets and the uh, round border is 10 and the bottom border is three and i think this came out beautiful i think we need to go find our top model aka sweater owner aka birthday girl and let's see how she loves it okay a quick video can you give me a spin i so oh my gosh pause there because this is gorgeous this is absolutely gorgeous See, it was just meant to be videos because I had no intentions. I so was taking pictures of you. And it just turned out like that. So, yeah, turn all the way around. Let me see your pockets. I, I always got to show off my pocket, yo. <laughs> hey, undo the uh, belt part. Yes, on this one, I put a belt. I got bored. And put belt on it. And can you just open it up? Just look at you and your birthday sticker. I so love that birthday sticker. And you, I'm just gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna steal so many pictures from this video because this coat is love, and you are displaying it beautifully. See, that's why that's my model. <laughs> oh. Bree, thank you. I really hope you enjoy your birthday sweater. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> okay, crochet fam. So thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I had a ball working it up. She absolutely loved it. Perfect timing for her birthday. She wore it right out the door. No hesitations at all. Um, Let's see. Subscribe. Like this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thank you for being patient with me frying chicken while making this video. I, I needed that time. If I didn't have that time, it would not have gotten done. And, you know, I'm mommy. Mommy has to get stuff done. <laughs> so, everyone, thank you for coming again. And I hope you loved it. Bye.